Hello there. My name is Eric Charles Hawkinson. Uh, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about a concept called the Reality Virtuality Continuum that's going to help us conceptualize and better understand all these terms in immersive technology. And what I mean by immersive technology, I mean AR, augmented reality, VR, virtual reality, and a slew of other hot button uh, uh, new terms that are coming out around these immersive technology fields, right? So maybe some of you have seen some of these, right? Some virtual reality worlds um, going out into the real world and catching some Pokemon in the park, um, taking a virtual tour of a space station on your PC, or maybe uh, actually hopping in some virtual reality and sharing some digital realm with friends. These are all examples of immersive technology. And what this is all doing for us is it's a, becoming a bridge between real life and digital contents, right? It's blending our lives with digital media in ways that um, was hard to imagine even just a few years ago, right? Everything that we do is being turned into data and being reflected back in, onto us in different ways. And this spectrum of technologies in augmented and virtual reality is going to act as this bridge. And moving towards the future, this new medium, as it were, as if we had print and radio and cinema and moving on to TV and the internet, and now we have phones in our pocket in the mobile area, this, this new era of immersive media is going to blend our real life and digital contents like never before. So all these new emerging technologies like uh, artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things and cloud computing and 3D printing, this is going to be, these technologies of augmented virtual realities is going to be a preferred way to uh, interface with a lot of these technologies. It's going to be the preferred mode of communication when these new emerging technologies get more ubiquitous. So <clears throat> this continuum that was originally introduced by a couple of researchers, Milgram and Kashino, in uh, a research paper has helped start to define uh, these terms that are coming out. So you can think of it like a spectrum, a rainbow of realities, right? Um, a lot of researchers like myself, when we think about all these things, we do think about them in a plurality, right? These are realities that we're living in now, not just one. So we have on one end a completely real world, no digital contents, no simulus, simulation at all. And on the other end, way down over here, we have a completely simulated environment with nothing real about it, right? So computer simulated driven, real life driven, right? <clears throat> it's really hard to think about a situation where you're actually 100% real or 100% virtual, right? It's hard for me to think of a situation. Even right now, you are, of course, a real person in the real world, but you're looking at a digital screen. So you're, the information that you're perceiving in your world is driven, at least in part, by inf digital information, probably from the internet, maybe watching it on your phone or in front of your computer. I, of course, am augmented myself because I'm standing in front of a, a screen and I'm displaying digital contents all around me, right? So I'm really standing in front of a little mini studio 
and you're not even seeing that, right? I'm cutting out all of that reality and putting them in all those digital contents on top of it. <clears throat> so it's really hard to just imagine a 100% real life environment. And the more we move into the future, these, world, these worlds, the digital world and the real world are melding with each other, becoming a plurality of realities. Maybe you can imagine going out into a cabin in the woods doing some sort of digital sabbatical and you'll be in the real world for a while. <clears throat> On the other end of things, it's also hard to imagine a 100% completely virtual environment because you're always incorporating something from the real world in, mo in, in most cases, right? Even the most advanced virtual reality setups are still taking your real movements your real eye movements, your real head movements, and tracking them and putting them into a virtual world. Maybe you can think of some science fiction reality where you download your consciousness and put it into a computer as uh, an algorithm, and that algorithm is now conscious, <laughs> and it's, it, it, it's uh, um, going about daily life, sort of like the Matrix um, in this computer program, the simulated environment. But again, it's hard. Most of us live here now in the mixed reality, which is a blending, a mix of real world information and digital contents, right? And as teachers, as tourism managers, as uh, politicians, we're all going to start having to think a little bit more about this spectrum and how and when to be on this spectrum when communicating information, right? So if, you want, if you're a teacher and you want to teach biology, maybe you go inside of a cell with virtual reality. Um, maybe you're wanting to teach old languages and you want people to be out in the real world actually uh, speaking with those native speakers in those, those, those languages, right? Um, there's a whole different bunch of reasons in design and um, modes of communication that we have to start thinking about where we are on the spectrum. Right. So one of the probably easiest ways to think about um, the spectrum is the device you use to get your digital contents. Right. Most of us have a smartphone, which is kind of like a a little window into the internet, right? It's most of us are looking through life through a window, right? So some we even have pass through AR, which we takes the camera. That's what Pokemon is, right? It puts a uh, digital Pokemon onto the ground in the real world in front of you. But even just watching a YouTube video is maybe slightly a little bit more towards the real world, but you're still looking through this digital lens, this digital window, right? So that's closer to augmented reality. As we move towards the other end of the spectrum, now we, we're coming towards what I like to call the phone on the face era, where we take our phones out of our pockets and we put them on our face and we connect digital contents to everything and everyone around us. So that becomes like a heads up display that we see all the time, right? We could get information about people's names with facial recognition. We can get heads up um, directions to where we need to go. But that's also incorporating the real world, right? You look at somebody, facial recognition, knows who they are, shows you a name above a face, etc., etc. right? Moving a little bit down the spectrum, a little, even a little bit more, is um, augmented virtuality. So one way I like to think about this is if your phone is a little window into the digital world, what if you're in a virtual world and you have a window into the real world, right? So let's say that you are in a VR simulated environment and you have a, a screen up on your virtual wall in this virtual palace that you live in, but that screen is a window into somewhere in the real world or you're video conferencing with somebody on Skype and you see them as a real person in the real world, right? 
So you're you're getting more immersed in more of the things that you see, you feel, you touch are simulated and less and less of the real world is represented. All right. So I like to end with this example, one of the examples that I showed at the top, uh, because this is a good way to think about where you are on the spectrum. So it depends on who is perceiving it as well. So in this video, I am playing a popular game called Beat Saber. And most of what I see and experience is uh, simulation. It's virtually created. Um, I'm standing on a virtual pedestal. Uh, my, my controllers turn into light swords. Everywhere I look is completely uh, simulated. Although I'm still a person standing on the floor, so this is not completely 100% virtual. But this video, however, is more towards the real world because you as a viewer, you're watching it on a screen, but also a real person is being displayed and um, projected into this virtual world. So my controller, I'm holding a controller in this video, and that controller is also represented as a light sword. So you're seeing a little bit of both. So it depends on where you are as a perception of where you, you bring in these technologies and where you are on this, this the virtuality continuum scale. Okay, so what do you think? You think you might get your head around this? Basically, from the real world to the virtual world is the virtual reality continuum, and we're going to have to think about where we are or what, we're, what communication we're trying to provide and where we might want to be on this continuum, especially moving forward in time using immersive technology. Again, my name's Eric Hawkinson. You can find more information about virtual reality, augmented reality, and a whole bunch of other projects on my website. We'll see you around. Bye-bye. <clears throat>